The Fate series is notorious for being nearly impossible to watch in a correct order if you're going anime only. Everything spoils everything else, and no matter what watch order you pick, someone is gonna yell at you for not watching it the right way. Until now. I have spent weeks putting together a watch order for the Fate series that not only limits spoilers to near none, but also makes sure that you're getting all of the context that you need going into each series. As much as possible, I've tried to make this guide anime only. That said, I did include a few parts of the Fate canon that are non-anime. You can skip these if you want, but I highly recommend you give them a shot. I'm going to give you a super shorthand version of the History of the Fate series to give you a little bit of context and then we're going to get you started. So as many of you know, the Fate series began with Fate Stay Night, a visual novel released in 2004 by Type Moon. The game had three main routes, Fate, Unlimited Blade Works, and Heaven's Field, and you're supposed to play out those routes in that order. When it came time to adapt the series into an anime, Studio Dean adapted the Fate route primarily, but they also threw in some spoilers for Unlimited Blade Works and Heaven's Field, which created kind of a muddied narrative. But since they did technically adapt the Fate route, which is the definite beginning point of the series, no other studio has bothered to adapt that part. So essentially, if you don't want to spoil the rest of the series, there is no starting point for Fate as an anime. So where do you begin? You begin with The History of the Kings of Britain by Geoffrey of Monmouth. Released around the year 1136, this contains the first full narrative of King Arthur, one of the main central characters in the Fate mythos. While much of Arthur's life story, as it's written in this text, is now considered to be non-canon, this is technically the first reference to the Fate franchise as a whole. Following this, you should immediately read Le Mort d'Arthur, which retconned most of Arthur's story and established a new canon that has now been adopted throughout the Fate franchise. This is especially important for understanding Arthur's relationship with Lancelot and Mordred, as that becomes very important later on in the Fate series. Now with both of these texts, there is one glaring oversight. Perhaps due to translation errors, King Arthur is in both texts mistakenly referred to as male, despite the fact that King Arthur is known to be female within the larger canon. This has led to many non-canon entries in the Fate franchise, such as Excalibur and Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where King Arthur is a man. These should be considered fan canon at best and largely ignored. Now you're ready to start watching some anime. Since we're missing some character introductions from the first Fate route, instead of jumping directly into Unlimited Blade Works or the prequel Fate Zero, we need to get you a little bit of context. In order to do that, you should now watch Carnival Phantasm, which is a parody show based on various in-jokes from the different Type Moon franchises. Essentially, rather than introducing yourselves to the characters through the stories, you'll be introducing yourself to the characters through pretending that you understand jokes about them, which is basically the same thing. Now this anime does feature characters from other Type Moon franchises outside of Fate, such as Tsukihime. There is an anime adaptation of Tsukihime, but you should just pretend that it does not exist. And that'll be great practice for when you have to pretend that the Unlimited Blade Works movie doesn't exist. Which is now! Instead, jump right into the 2016 television anime adaptation of Unlimited Blade Works. This is one of the most solidly put together entries in the Fate franchise, so really you don't have to do anything special to it while watching other than just accept that Tosaka is best girl. Next up should be the Fate Heavensfeel movies. But movies are kinda long, aren't they? Who has time for that? So to hell with it, we both know why you really wanted to start watching the Fate series, so just go ahead and watch Fate Prisma Ilya. You degenerate. This has several seasons, OVAs, a movie, so it's basically a franchise in its own right. It's better that you go ahead and get this out of your system, because if you don't, you know you'll just be rushing through the rest of the Fate canon so that you can eventually get to Prisma Ilya. So go ahead, treat yourself, you weeb. Now you can watch the Heavens Feel movies if you want, but we've already veered off track with the Loli spinoff. Let's just keep going and see what happens. Oh look, this one has a really cute girl. Mm Might as well watch Fate Apocrypha. This is in a completely alternate universe, so you don't need any kind of context going in. Just enjoy the filler. Speaking of alternate universes, why not watch Fate Prototype? Another spinoff featuring King Arthur as a guy who made this myth. Since we're watching OVAs, why not watch Fate Grand Order First Order May I Take Your Order, which is a spin-off of the mobile game. There's a mobile game, you ask? Please don't ask. Then you should watch Bayonetta Bloody Fate, because that's on my anime list and it has Fate in the title. Then you should listen to Duel of the Fates from Star Wars, because that is one of the best tracks ever made, and it's gonna be perfect background music while you watch Today's Menu with the Emiya Family, a spin-off about watching the cast of Fate Stay Night eat, if Saber Mukbang is really just your thing. Then there's Fate Extra, Last Encore. Skip it. And lastly, you should watch Fate Zero, so that you can end on a show that's actually good. If all of that sounds entirely too daunting to you, I congratulate you on your sanity. You can get around most of this by just reading the first round of the visual novel before you start any anime. 
But if you choose to do this, I definitely recommend that you get the censored version of the VN, because otherwise it just reads like bad, smutty history fanfiction. Oh, did I not mention that the original Fate Stay Night visual novel is an etchy game? Yes, that's right. The multi-million dollar franchise that's seeing a renaissance of popularity all over the world is in fact based on smut. But then again, you knew what you were getting into because you were trying to rush your way to Fate Prisma Ilya. So welcome to the Fate fandom. We hate chronological orders, single universes, having money, and watching Fate. But damn do we love waifus. Where's my phone? I gotta roll for the new Saber alt. 